Welcome back, everybody. We are in top four of the One Piece TCG Knoxville Regional hosted by PPG. We have Law versus Zoro. I believe we're in set four, but we are going to see two set one decks do. This is the last stronghold for Zoro players. And beyond this, I believe it's Whitebeard versus Law as for a match. So pretty safe to say red is taking the event. We see Buggy come down on Zoro's side. Buggy very powerful in Zoro, being the one cost 3k, leader effect makes it a 4k. So one Dawn investment to have an attacker. Okay, we're going to see Law go ahead and play down a Brook and just pass turn. Looks like Zoro might have all of the Straw Hat Dawn, one each. Very nice, very nice. And like I was just saying, one Dawn investment makes the buggy an attacker. And there's something very important to keep in mind here about that buggy. Buggy cannot be taken down by a slash attribute character. And guess what Law is? Law is a slash attribute character. Oh, leader. Sorry, yeah. Slash attribute leader. Just still, buggy can't go down by a slash attribute. Alright, we're going to see Dadon search out a Nami. Dadon also a slash. Buggy just sort of gets to live rent free. I think Brook is also a slash. Rook is also a slash, so that buggy just no threats on it whatsoever. We see a Bonnie come down just to sort of sit on the board. Against Zoro, you kind of just want to get your game plan going as quickly as possible because Zoro is not going to give you much time at all. We already see Law is down to two life. Again, this buggy just gets to do so much, and if you want to remove it with your Nami, I think is special attribute or ranged maybe. I don't believe that she's slash though. Oh, and we're gonna go ahead and mark away the Bonnie. The the punish for playing a Bonnie without using its effect is that it is open to removal, and we see the removal come down as the Marco. We're gonna see five go across the table at Zoro. Zoro's gonna go ahead and take it. Many of the cards in Zoro's arsenal are very aggressive, and more cards in the hand is very powerful for sure. Zoro doesn't have to worry about getting starved, which is one of the main ways that people sort of deal with Zoro. We see a blocker law come to hand. I'm going to pay one for a chopper, and then we're going to use two to use law's room effect. Probably going to put back the Nami. Yep. Thinking about it, could put back the could put back the the Dadon to look for a one drop. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that Bonnie with a Zoro, and now we're ready to probably go in here. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go in. 5k at the leader. Winterbox Zoro probably is at the, the point. Stage, please. Winterbox 74 up to the stage, please. Zoro's probably at the point where countering out of this is a reasonable move. And we're going to counter out with a 2k. Very telling about the hand. Means the hand is probably a lot of 1ks and uh, rushers. Or maybe the 1k that we have is another Marco. Maybe it's just a card that we really would prefer having on board than in the trash. Alright, we're going to see one on the Zoro and then one on the buggy. The law could get a free block here. If we choose to only go for five with buggy. Marco being a 7k though is pretty terrifying. Zoro's leader ability 
very important. The wider your board is, the more impactful it is. For one Don, you give if one Don is attached to your leader, you give all of your your character cards plus one, which is which is quite large. You turn six Ks into seven Ks, which matters a lot. And in fact, we swing with the buggy, bait the block, and then go ahead and take him out with the with the uh, assistance of an Otama. We're gonna go seven K at the Zoro. That's gonna go ahead and get met with the blocker. We see Zoro sort of switching game plan. Don't want Law's board to get too far out of hand. We see another buggy come down. Again, buggy just kind of gets to live on the board rent free. And Buggy's going to grab the zero cost plus 3k uh, table manor kick course. Yes, that's it. And we're going to see Fire Fist come down. Are we going to discard the table manners that we just got? No table manners at all. We're going to clear, clear the Nami and clear the Zoro. And there we go. Okay, so we have cleaned off Law's board very efficiently that turn. Law can reestablish, but it's going to take a lot of Don to do that. And we still have this buggy that you can't do anything about. Still have this Marco that you might try to do something about, but it just revives. Zoro's board is incredibly resilient right now. Okay, we're going to see Starter Nami come down. Go ahead and put... A Don on the leader and swing. I don't know if we're going on the Marco or we're going across the table to the Zoro. Looks like we're going across the table. Alright, we're going to take that. No trigger. Bonnie comes down and rests. I do love how players always just tap two for Bonnie. Yeah. Bonnie, Bonnie basically costs two. There's no reason to. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to Don here, looking for any red one drop. We get pretty much every option in our deck. We have Chopper, Nami, and Makino. All right, and we're going to go ahead and play the Capone. And we're going to use Leader Effect now that we're back at 5. We reestablished our board, thanks to one drops into Don. And we're going to put down a Zoro in place of the Bonnie. This allows us to keep the Bonnie. Unfortunately, we might not have any more Law Blockers. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and draw, and this is a turn where we can make quite a number of attacks on Law, and it'll be interesting to see if Law can survive it. Zoro does need to keep in mind that Law can come out of nowhere to win a game, so you don't want to overcommit if you cannot close it. Okay. So we've got the Don on the leader, standard. And then here we go as Buggy across the table. You really love to see the power of Buggy in matchups like this. Just the effect that it cannot be KO'd by slash attribute leader or characters is something you would, it just seems so unassuming, and yet it's so impactful in a lot of these red matches. That it's really the best card that you can play on your first turn. Round five for the 10 a.m. chopper is now posted. All right, Law has dropped down to one life. Law does still have a blocker, which is good because Zoro has a Marco. Zora has a Marco, swings in, Beige blocks, 
And now Zoro still has six Don remaining. What are we going to do with it? Do we have another Marco? Do we have a Rush Zoro? Do we have a Luffy? Big think on Zoro's side here. Okay, we're gonna pay two, play a Dadon. Curly Dadon, gonna look at the top five for a one drop. Gonna grab an Izo, which gets to look at the top five for a white beard. The consistency that red decks have is pretty wild. And we're gonna add Couldn't quite see what that was. It might have been a blocker. No, it was Blamenko. We'll get Blamenko up on the screen here in a second so you all can see it as Law starts his turn up. This was the card he just added. Don one when attacking, give one of your opponent's characters minus two. Okay, it's like an Otama on swing. It's pretty cool. It's a white beard. Okay, we've got eight. We're just going to Red Hawk and uh, take that Dadon out. That is that is a favorable front front exchange for Zoro. Get out of the attack and remove the Dadon from the board. Set Law back a little bit again. And now here comes Bonnie. Bonnie gets the best card in the deck. Blocker Law. And we're going to put some Dawn on this Brook and go ahead and swing five. Counter out with the Baumenko. Nami puts some Don on the leader. Winterbox Just gonna swing six. Up to the stage, up to the stage. Trash and Otama. Now we just need to sort of build our board back. So here's a Beige. And then we can put this Brook back in our hand, which is why we attacked with it. Get some value first. Play down this Law. Put this Bonnie back in hand. And do we have another blocker? No, but we do have a Nami. Can Nami find us some counter power? Nami absolutely can. Interesting. So there's also the option of the chopper blocker, but the counter power, definitely more enticing here. I think we just lost three Otama, though. Which, that, that could come up in a big way. Though, to be fair, it's not like Zoro could take out many, if any, of the cards that are currently on the board, at least effectively. Or Law. Sorry, not Zoro. Law. Alright, here we are. Ten Don turn. One more for the next winner box. One more for the next winner box. We have one Don up. Radical Beam. Also, we have a Phone in Lost and Found. Phone in Lost and Found. Put a Don on Leader. And just, I guess, start picking away. We're going to go five. So this could be a free block from the law, but we saw what happened when that when that transpired last time. Otama came down and made the law a 4k, and then it just ended up falling to the 6k leader. We're going to go ahead and get the free block, though. And then you see the Zoro pick up one Dawn, and you're like, oh no, not again. Looks like we're going to put a little bit more behind this buggy. We've got a 7k buggy swing. So if you have a guard point or if you have a radical beam, that's your one card out to this. You could block it. Otherwise you're losing at least two cards from your hand. Okay, so we're going to block, and we're going to invite Marco. 
So, and that's that's what's going to happen. It looks like we might have a 10k Marco. Put one on the Dadan. Rip another card out of the hand. We're going to rip a 2k out. The value that we just got from that. Okay, we still have leader. We'll go seven. And the... Okay. Now we still see that one left open. Marco comes across the table as a 10. But we saw the radical beam get searched earlier. It's possible that it's not remembered, but... The number to attack with is probably nine. And so that's what we're going to do. Nine is radical beam plus a 2k. Two cards left in hand. Izo is not going to be enough to get through. So that'll be a turn pass. All right. Now is Law's opportunity. Probably Law's last opportunity. Let's see if Law is able to take the win. Law still has Brook, so he can basically for zero Dawn get another body on the board. But still has to go through so much. Three life. And however many cards Zoro has in hand. At least three. Hard to tell. Okay, we're going to pay two for the Brook. Go ahead and put that Don on the Zoro. And we're going to go eight across the table. And Zoro's just going to go ahead and take that. Oh no. Oh no. It's the Jet Pistol. Oh man. The way to play around the Jet Pistol is to put one Don on the Law before swinging. To see in the semifinals the Jet Pistol punish... Wow. That... That probably just seals it. Zoro just needs to counter out of this attack. Chooses not to. And we're just going to go 9. And Zoro's going to guard point 2k. And we're just going to concede on that one. Yeah, the... Uh, you know, you don't see it very often, but... When you do see the Jet Pistol Punish, it is it is pretty... Whew, man. Law is going to go ahead and lose game one. Zoro wins. I think Zoro was fine regardless of the Jet Pistol, actually. I don't really think the Jet Pistol made too terribly much difference. But what it did do was force Law to spend Don on an extra card, which took Don away from the attack. We couldn't see all of Zoro's hand. There was at least another Machino in it. But that 5 Don on the Luffy really might have made the difference. It could have been the difference maker for sure. And it all could have been avoided by putting one Don on the Law. Granted, though, the Jet Pistol still would have cleared another card. Which is why I'm not sure if it would have mattered too much, but... Wow. Brian, you know, in... You know, in semifinals, that's when you want your Jet Pistols in your life the most. All right, Law's going to most likely force Zoro to go first here, and Zoro's not going to care. Zoro is one of the decks that really doesn't care if it goes first or second. It has enough one-drops. In fact, if you let Zoro go first, it's going to attack you with those one-drops a turn sooner. So we're just going to wait for the players to go ahead and shuffle up. We saw Law keep the hand, which probably means in it, or a Dadan since he's going second. And we saw Zoro throw the hand back. Probably didn't have a Nami in it. <laughs> hmm. 
All right. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and get the hand and get ready. All right. So Zoro is going to go ahead, put the Dawn down, and the question on everyone's mind, is there a one drop? There sure is. It's not buggy, though. And I'm sure Law is actually very excited to see that it's not buggy. Okay, we're going to get a Vista. That's concerning. You are in Winterbox 76. Please report to the stage. Izo grabbing that visa means that we... V, Vista, sorry. Visa. <laughs> Izo just got a Visa MasterCard. Yeah, Izo grabbing that Vista means that Zoro has removal on this turn. Could just slam Vista, clear something. Yep. Buddy Battle, 2 you clear. Checking in registration is now open. You clear the Buddy red Battle, card. 2 p.m. Registration and check-in is now open. You clear the red blocker there. They're really the same thing, but they're not. Remember, Law has to bounce a green to play a red and bounce a red to play a green. So you clear the red one to try to cut him off of being able to play the blocker Law with his leader effect. Now we see Brook come down. Film Brook, which just gets to play a three-cost or lower straw hat or a film character. In Law, it plays a straw hat. It's a four-don investment for a seven-don return. And getting a Nico Robin off of it is great, but we do see Marco come down from Zoro. Now, Robin will get value here. Robin will be able to actually clear something. We're going to see five come across the table from Law almost immediately. Is there going to be a Jet Pistol? No. Okay. Now we know Jet Pistol's there. Now there's the fear. Is it? Is it going to be a Jet Pistol? Wow. We just slammed three Bonnies on the board. One Don each, not using their effects, because we have one Don for Robin, and then two Don for the leader effect. So we're actually going to pay one for the Bonnie. We're not going to go with the Robin to clear something this turn. Robin, of course, is very good at removing Buggy, but Izo's not as big of a threat, and... Vista's not exactly much of a threat as a 3 cost. We then see the Bonnie come back to hand and play the Luffy. So Robin's just going to stick around for a turn. Wait for something maybe a little bit more high value. Or wait until you can trade into one of your opponent's uh, character cards. Try to get a nice 2 for 1. Or wait for Buggy to come down. Robin might be there exclusively to take out the Clown. Looks like Buggy whiffed. Oh no, there's another. Will the second Buggy whiff? Ah, uh, it does not look like it did. That's a guard point. Alright, Buggy is back. The Clown Prince of Crime. We see Izo come down. Replacing an Izo at that. Just looking for a white beard. Looks like we might have a few options. And we're going to go ahead and grab the Pseudo Otama, Pseudo Tama, if you will, Balmenko, Blamenko. And then we're going to go ahead and put our Dawn on our Zoro. And it's time for our characters to turn sideways, so Vista, I choose you. 5k, we're going to get out of that. We're going to go 6. 
7 at the leader. That'll be a damage. Now we're going to go 7 at the leader again. Law does not have a lot of cards in hand, but is going into a turn with two Bonnies already established. So we're going to be able to reload that hand very quickly. Law is at zero life, though. All right, let's go ahead and start the hand reload. Bonnie. Uh, wow, that was close. That was very close. Good thing Beige is a supernova. Then we're going to use the other Bonnie. Okay, there he is. There's the boy. And also the only target in the in the top five. My goodness. Though one could argue it's the only target that you need. And here we go. We're going to get the value that I was talking about last turn. Robin swings on a card and clears the other one. Get a nice plus two off of that exchange. I'm going to put one Don on this Luffy. And we're playing around Jet Pistol now, which is good to see. It's good to see that we're not going to allow the Jet Pistol to come down and ruin our day this time. Guard point. We're going to go ahead and get out of that attack. Just go six at the leader. A 2k exchanges favorably here for Zoro. But he might just also take it Depends on what his hand is and if he's looking for anything. Law's board is getting fairly out of control. But Law is also on zero life with a blocker coming. We're going to use the effect. Let's put this Robin back in hand where she's safe. Let's play this blocker Law. Probably return one of the Bonnies. And probably slam down either a blocker or the Robin. We're going to put back the Winter Bonnie. And we're going to go... Looks like we're thinking really hard about that Zoro. We're going to put the Zoro down. Now the Zoro does not have counter power, so it is understandable. And we can just replace the Bonnie with this Beige blocker anyway. So we're, we're setting up for a pretty impressive turn, assuming we survive this one. And it's very possible that we will survive this one. Though with Buggy the Clown on the board, it is it is going to be hard. And I know that sounds like a joke, but Maki knows make that Buggy very large very fast. Okay, we're going to do the standard one Don on the leader here. We're going to put one more on it, go seven at the leader. Seven at the leader is pretty tempting to just counter out of. And it looks like that's exactly what we're going to do. Go ahead and drop an Otama, drop the Robin. Robin served the purpose. It's She's probably not going to be needed for the rest of the game, or at least not get the opportunity to be needed. Now we have Buggy coming across the table for seven again. And we know Marco is at least a seven, but could put two Don on it and make it a nine. We're going to go ahead and Beige, and now the Marco, I think the Marco definitely comes across the table as a 9. Because now your opponent is very potentially forced to block with the law. Alright. So I was thinking about how big to make the Marco. Maybe just eight. Okay, we're just going to do eight. So this is two cards out of your opponent's hand, at least. 
in many cases unless they choose to just block with the law and lose it. You do have the chance that if your opponent blocks with the law and protects it, you can just slap three Don on that Ezo and go in for 6k. Maybe that's enough. And we are going to see the law block and go down. So now the Ezo probably doesn't get through. But you did manage to clear the law. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play... I do not remember his name at all, but he buffs the Izo. His name is Magra. Yes, so the Izo, that takes a lot of cards out of Law's hand, but Law doesn't fall to it. Magra giving the Izo plus three, and then the one Don and the Zoro effect. So five, six, seven K. Law gets out of it, though. And we have one Don left up for Zoro. No blockers. Only three cards in hand. Law has to do so much, and we see Law playing around the jet pistol. It only takes it to happen once. Zoro's just so excited to defend the attack. Already throwing the cards out. My goodness, Zoro has, looks like, six cards in hand. One Don up. We know Buggy searched a guard point, but a guard point was used already. Okay, we're going to go five at the leader. If you're Zoro, you might just consider countering out of this. Why risk it? And that's what we're going to do. Go seven. Probably just get rid of an Otama or use a guard point. Makes a lot of sense. Just every attack that your opponent whiffs makes it more and more impossible for you to lose. We see seven come across the table from the law. Zoro thinking about it. Maybe takes this one, maybe doesn't. Law does have a lot of potential burst built into the deck. Rush Zoro's the ability to untap stuff. Law does have to reestablish his board, though. Soros still just big think here. Taking this damage could mean the difference between winning and losing. We're going to go ahead and take it. And then we're going to go at the leader for a an 8, which we're going to just double Tama out of that. And that'll be the game. That's where... That is where it ends. All right, so we have Zoro taking a 2-0 victory against Law. Very impressive. Zoro making it look easy. I would say. Um, Zoro showing how powerful the one drop package is. How incredibly strong a card like Buggy is against a deck with all slash attributes. And just how, how strong it is. How far it's come. It looks like we even had a trigger in the life too. My goodness. We also got to see the ultimate punish in one P. Um, the jet pistol in life. So it was a very good game. We are going to be moving on to our finals. Right now, your semifinals, Zoro proceeds to the finals where he will face either a Whitebeard or a Law. So we will go ahead and get the finals set up and we'll get back to you 